Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Monday, October 25th, 2010. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 5.30 p.m. in Baden-Baden in Germany. In Hamilton, it's 12.30 p.m. And in Mexico City, it's 10.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX overseas or AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. We welcome all of our friends and viewers in Baden-Baden in Germany where they are meeting for their annual conference and we wish them well. Um, we have some news before we go into our main news. Uh, this is U.S. economic news. Sales of existing homes in the United States uh, for last month jumped by 10 percent. This like blew away all the estimates of uh, most of the analysts. So the stock market is responding in kind. It's up about 76 points right now. Now we'll go to our main news. The main news has to do with the uh, market form syndicates, market form management services limited, uh, the managing agency of Lloyd Syndicate 2468 has licensed the CADEX Pivot Point Border Row Management System. CADEX's Border Row Management System provides for the uploading of risk border row, which then create the underlying risks with all provided information, premium and claims information, including individual APs and RPs attached specifically to the underwriting, underwritten, underlying risks. Underwriters end up with the same level of information as if they had written and processed uh, the risks themselves directly. CADEX will be holding two open demo days at its London office on Fenchurch Avenue on November 2nd and November 3rd. Market Form was founded in 1989 and is a UK and international specialist insurer. It operates in the Lloyd market with subsidiaries in Australia, Italy, and Spain. Well, over the, uh, on late Friday night, I was going to say over the weekend, but it was late Friday, New York State Supreme Court Justice Charles Ramos rejected uh, former AIG CEO Hank Greenberg's request for a summary judgment. Greenberg had asked that the five-year-old case that accuses him and former AIC, AIG CFO Howard Smith of engaging in sham reinsurance deals with Berkshire Hathaway's Gen Re subsidiary be thrown out. The judge said, no, no, no. Ramos said there is ample proof, exclusive of the emails and notes, which warrant the conclusion that Greenberg was a participant and likely spearheaded an illicit arrangement between Gen Re and AIG to effectuate a transaction to artificially inflate AIG's loss reserves. This case was, of course, initially filed over 10 years ago, excuse me, over five years ago, two months after Greenberg was ousted from AIG, um, New York Attorney General at the time, Elliot Spitzer, accused Greenberg and Smith of designing two finite recontracts that enabled AIG to improperly boost reserves by half a billion dollars. Five former Gen Re and AIG executives were convicted of fraud. Uh, in another ruling, Judge Ramos granted a summary judgment in favor of the current Attorney General of New York, Andrew Cuomo, in a manner in which in a matter in which Greenberg and Smith were accused of designing another sham transaction with Capco reinsurance. This transaction would supposedly have hidden more than $200 million in losses that AIG suffered in vehicle warranty programs. Ramos said that the court found that the evidence, quote, established that the defendant's stated objective in effectuating the Capco transaction was not to improve AIG's assets, but to conceal from investors underwriting losses. Uh, their attorneys plan to file appeals against both rulings, of course. Well, some more on the economic toll in France. The strikes in France are apparently costing the national economy up to 400 million euros each day. That's 562 million U.S. This is according to the French finance minister today. Workers are continuing to block ports, oil refineries, and garbage incineration plants plants over the government's plan to raise the retirement age to 62. All 12 of France's 12 refineries remain shut down today in ports in Le Havre and Marseille. Dozens of tankers laden with oil are still anchored offshore waiting to come into port. Nearly 10,000 tons of garbage have been piling up in southern Marseille, France's second largest city, and a garbage incineration plant outside Paris was shut down by strikers. 
On Friday, the big vote occurred. The French Senate voted 177 to 153 to pass the pension reform. Uh, now, later today, uh, groups of legislators from both the upper and lower parliamentary houses are meeting to try to agree on the definitive version of the bill uh, so there can be final passage by both chambers later this week. The lower house has already passed the bill. The French finance minister Christine Lagarde said on Europe One Radio this morning that it's difficult to put a daily price tag on the strikes, but she estimated that it's between 200 and 400 million euros. Well, in Myanmar, which used to be known as Burma, at least 14 people have been killed and about 100 more injured after a fire occurred at an oil pipeline in the central part of the country. Authorities were battling the blaze today. It appeared to have been started accidentally by local villagers who were collecting oil leaking from the pipeline. At least 14 people were killed, said the government. There could be more casualties. The fire began after about 200 villagers started collecting leaking oil from the pipe on Sunday and then lit a flame to see in the dark. The official said that the authorities had shut down the 32-kilometer-long government-owned pipeline. Myanmar um, is rich in natural resources, including oil and gas. Total of France and Chevron of the U.S. are two of the biggest Western companies in Myanmar and have faced criticism from rights groups for their dealings with the regime. The regime, of course, has not held a free election in 20 years, Nobel Peace Prize winner Aung San Suu Kyi continues to remain in home imprisonment there. There was a fire on Saturday night at an animal feed manufacturing plant in Kansas City, Kansas. This is owned by uh, Darling International. Uh, the fire apparently began accidentally when a processing byproduct overheated. Uh, the plant at 229 North James Street apparently sustained $3 million worth of damage. Stock market is up about 76 points right now. We'll go to a word from our sponsors. The U.S. broker Aon has purchased an Italian broker called Rassini Vigano. Uh, this was, occurred apparently on Friday afternoon. No financial details have been given. Rassini Vigano specializes in risk management, mitigation consultancy, and reinsurance brokerage. It's headquartered in Milan, has regional offices in Rome, Verona, Naples, and Bari. No further details were available. Cooper Gay has boosted its German presence by rebranding the reinsurance operations of its marine broker, Jung and Company, as Cooper Gay Germany. The Cooper Gay Germany team, which places all lines of fact and treaty reinsurance, is going to be led by Peter Schwab and will continue to be based in Hamburg. Cooper Gay acquired a 100% stake in Jung um, back in uh, actually four years ago when it acquired the 49% share in the business that it did not own. So now both Cooper Gay and Jung are part of the world's largest global independent wholesale and reinsurance broker called Cooper Gay Sweat and Crawford. 
a combined group of businesses employing 1,500 insurance executives in offices across four continents. Toby Esser is a man on fire, that's for sure. Well, this is from the uh, Royal Gazette in Bermuda, which is very tuned into these sorts of things, especially if there's a redomicile move that's occurred. Of course, Catlin redomiciled from um, uh, Bermuda to Switzerland. Catlin has transferred an underwriter uh, from Bermuda to head its new property reinsurance business in Switzerland. Christoph Chandler has worked on Bermuda in Bermuda since 06 as an underwriter specializing in property reinsurance for Catlin Bermuda. He's now been appointed as head of the property portfolio for Catlin Re in Switzerland. This is the new reinsurer being set up by Catlin with about 11, uh, with about one billion dollars in capital. In addition, Jean-Pierre Portman, formerly with Swiss Re, has joined Catlin Re Switzerland. He will specialize in trade credit and surety reinsurance. Catlin announced earlier this year that it had applied to the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority to establish Catlin Re Switzerland. Catlin expects uh, approval to be obtained in time to begin writing January 1, 2011 renewals. And here's a little uh, floater, maybe give you some indication of Ballantyne, McKean, and Sullivan. Uh, BMS has appointed James Botsis as VP of its property and casualty team in Chicago. Uh, prior to coming to BMS, Botsis had held the position of assistant VP at Towers Watson in Chicago for 11 years. BMS said that Botsis' appointment is an important step toward growing both the P&C team and the company's broking business. Well, there's a uh, volcano in Indonesia that apparently is getting ready to erupt at any time. Uh, this is Mount Merapi, M-E-R-A-P-I. It's seen increased volcanic activity over the past week, and officials have raised the alert level for the 9,800-foot mountain to the most urgent level. The uh, volcano last erupted in 06 when it sent an avalanche of blistering gases and rock fragments down the mountain, killing two people. A similar eruption killed 60 people in 94 and 1,300 people back in 1930. Officials have predicted that if it erupts, magma would flow down the southern side of the volcano. So now some 12,000 villagers are being prepared for urgent evacuation. About 40,000 people in total will have to be evacuated once uh, it crosses the line and begins to erupt. Well, here's an interesting final story. The Singaporean and Australian stock exchanges have announced a merger. It's going to create one of the biggest and most diversified financial trading hubs in the world. A takeover bid by the Singapore exchange at an agreed $3.8 billion price for the Sydney-based Australian Stock Exchange, which is also known as AXS Limited, will make the new entity the world's fifth largest listed exchange group. Two exchanges in a joint press release said the merger is to ward off the threat of alternative trading systems, seek potential growth, and cut costs. Um, the announcement comes just after the Australian Stock Exchange um, lost its long-held monopoly after the Australian government gave the green light for rival share exchanges to operate in the country. The deal supposedly will result in $30 million in cost savings. Magnus Bakker, the Singapore chief executive, will become the CEO of the combined group, said that the merger will allow investors to ride on Asia's strong economic growth. Most importantly, the Wall Street Journal says that the merger is going to create a market that's $1.9 trillion U.S. in size. That's a pretty big market. Well, in the United States, if you follow baseball, you know that on Friday night, the New York Yankees were eliminated and will not be going to the World Series. And on Saturday night, you learned that the Philadelphia Phillies were eliminated and they too will not be going to the World Series. So the two teams that played in the World Series last year are home already vacationing. Meanwhile, the World Series, which begins later this week, will feature the San Francisco Giants against the Texas Rangers. San Francisco is making their first appearance in some time, and the Rangers are making their first appearance ever. Also, for you football fans, Wayne Rooney has re-signed with Manchester United. Hear, hear. Everybody in New Jersey.